and happy holidays, happy new year, everyone. This is something a little different for us, but Luke and David and I wanted to hop on the mic and uh, wish everyone a happy new year and make a little announcement of sorts. But before we do that, I just want to ask you guys, did either of you watch this year's BBC Ghost Story for Christmas, Lot 249? No, I missed it. Ah, I did. Okay. Well, it's it's still pretty new, and it's out there on, on BritBox and, and the BBC iPlayer, whatever it's called. So we'll keep it spoiler-free, but just really quickly, I wanted to let people know, it's written by Mark Gatiss, story by Conan Doyle, and I don't know, David, what did you think about it? Because there's obviously some very um, Sherlockian Easter eggs hidden in there. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if we can even talk about it without going into spoilers. But what did you think about it? I, I enjoyed it. I thought it could, uh, I could have done with more of it, actually. And yeah, there's a lovely little surprise in there for Sherlockians amongst us. We won't ruin it. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And Luke, I think when you see it, you're going to be um, pleasantly surprised. So everybody check that one out. Mark Gatiss could really use our support. He's really struggling in his career. Let's just uh, <laughs> let's give him a little support. I don't think it is, but it could be the start of something that could be coming in the future. Yeah, there's there are some rumors going on around this thing, which I, I don't think so either. But uh, everyone can watch it and make their own decision. Okay, well, let's get down to the reason why we're here. So for the past few months, we here at the Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes podcast have had something brewing behind the scenes, and it's still very much in the early stages. But we thought that it would make sense to talk a little bit about it now with you, our friends and listeners, and maybe solicit a little feedback before we get too far along. So I'm just going to shut up and I'm going to let David and Luke explain because they're the ones who have been working so hard on this. Luke, give us the breakdown. Hello, fellow Bretons. Luke here. January 11th is a pretty big milestone for this podcast. It's five years since we started this journey. Yay! Wow. Get the party poppers. Yeah. Which leads us to a different milestone. April 24th, 1984. Yeah. The original airing of Scandal Bohemia starring Jeremy Brett, David Burke, and Gail Honeycutt. Yeah. 40 glorious years since that first episode, <laughs> 40 years for us to admire it, and five years for us to think of a way to honor it. So here's what we had in mind. What if we all got together in person somewhere around London and really celebrate this thing? What could we do? So here's what we thought. Invite a few of our previous guests, various cast members, crew members from the Granada series, get everyone in a room, discuss the show, share some stories, answer some questions, maybe turn it into a one-off convention. Maybe we call it the Jeremy Brett Sherlock Holmes podcast presents the Granada TV Sherlock Holmes series 40th anniversary <laughs> reunion <laughs> convention spectacular. Or for short, we just call it Brett Con 2024. There you go. So we've been working on this for a while. But David has a lot of ideas, so I want David to jump in. Well, yeah, David, tell us, I mean, you know, you guys have had some great ideas for this thing in, in terms of, like, panels and guests, and, I mean, th there's there's so much we could say, but just give us a taste, David. What, what, what are you guys thinking about for this thing? As this is the 40th anniversary of the series and the start of the series, I wanted to reflect, have the panels reflect all the aspects of the different shows. So we've done 83 interviews up to this point of <laughs> cast and crew covering, like I said, all the various aspects of the show. So we could do a panel about costumes with Esther Dean, for example. Mm -hmm. um, we could look at the music of the show. We could look at the acting, get some of the actors on board. We can look at the directions. We can look at camera work, writing. There's mm -hmm. so much we could do and so much we could talk about. It's about perhaps bringing our Sherlockian conversations to a wider audience, a live audience even. As well as the panels, we'll also have opportunities for autographs and photos with our guests, and you get to meet and chat to them. And at the end of the day, to cap the event off, we'll be holding an HD screening of one of the very first episodes, which, as things stand right now, will be the Blue Carbuncle, one of the most popular episodes. Hot damn. I think this will be the highlight of the event, truly, as we are hoping to have as many of those who worked on the show join us as well, which is pretty cool as we get to watch the Blue Carbuncle with those that made it. And those who love it. And those who love it, yeah, <laughs> which I think is pretty special. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, I thought about this as like a community gathering rather than a convention because it might be a chance to be in the room with your people, meet some folks you've only been talking to on social media, and it's a chance for us to meet some of you as well because Gus and I are pretty isolated out here in Arizona, mm -hmm. but David gets to have all the fun. <laughs> so, I mean, what are we thinking? We're thinking we have a date in mind, right? Yeah. Do you want to say it? 
At the moment, our plan is to hold this on Saturday the 25th of May, just outside London. Yeah. And we're also thinking more than just the one day on the Saturday of the event, we're thinking of making this a weekend event as well. We'll have the main event would be on a Saturday, but then maybe on Friday night, anybody who's in town, we get together, we have dinner, we do that kind of a thing. And then maybe we go to the Sherlock Holmes pub. Yeah, well, and after the event on Sunday, we can all, you know, make our way to some Sherlockian locations, maybe some shooting locations, whatever comes up, whatever everybody wants to do together. And so it'll be a little weekend of Jeremy Brett, Sherlock Holmes goodness. And again, like Luke said, just everybody being with their people, we think it'll be something really special. So we kind of wanted to just float this balloon and really just kind of feel it out with the community and, and just try, try to figure out a way to judge, you know, if there really is an interest out there. And I think there's a couple of ways we can do that. This is going to be as big or as little as the interest dictates, you know? Yeah, exactly. This is where we need your help. We only want to do this if we can turn this into an event that really celebrates the series, brings together Bretons from around the world hopefully, and create a real feeling of community. Over the past few years, we've managed to speak to so many people from the series, around the series, and we're planning to reach out to all of them and have this be something of a reunion, but also have it be a chance for us to show appreciation for their work and just generally have a nice day out. That said, it's not going to happen for free. So if this is something you're interested in, we need to hear from you. So you can let us know by reaching out to us on social media or emailing us at contact at sherlockpodcast.com Or, way better yet, if you're positive this is something you want to attend, we've created a link to purchase a pre-sale ticket. This provides us with concrete data on whether or not we can actually pull this thing off. So David, where can we direct people to? So we've set up a Ticket Tailor account and we will be selling tickets through them. Uh, The link for which we will share on our social media. There will also be a link on our website to take you straight through to the tickets. Uh, All tickets and details for the event you'll find on there. Uh, So yeah, get buying. Yeah, and speaking of the website and ticketing packages, we did create a VIP option, but this was less about perks and more for someone who may want to contribute towards the cost of the event. Similarly, there will be a donate option on the website. If there's some other way you might want to contribute that we haven't thought of, please feel free to get in contact with us at contact at sherlockpodcast.com. Yeah, and we should say, if for some reason this doesn't come together, all these tickets are refundable uh, if things don't, if it doesn't work out in the end. Yeah, and our plan is to make this a non-profit show. Any of the money we raise that goes beyond covering the cost of the actual event will be donated to Mind or something similar, something Jeremy would have appreciated. Yeah, some mental health charitable organization, I think that, you know, would have made Jeremy proud. Send us your thoughts, send suggestions, send advice, because frankly, we don't know what to expect might be out of our minds, and if we are, we'll figure some other way to celebrate the 40th in a different way. But we think this could be really special, so we'll wait to hear from you, and we promise the next episode will definitely be Hound. (laughs) Yeah. To get us in the 40th anniversary spirit, I thought we'd have a quick chat, because our friends at the Sherlock Holmes magazine are currently running an online poll to see which is the best Sherlock, or people's favourite Sherlock Holmes episode from the entire series. Right. Uh, links you can find links to this poll on our Facebook page, on our Twitter page, uh, or via the Sherlock Holmes magazine website. Yeah, but I think we already know what episode it is. I think we do, but <laughs> we've all voted, right? Yes, I did vote. I voted for drumroll, please, the solitary cyclist. I don't know. I'm not sure it's no surprise to anybody. But <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I voted for the Copper Beaches. Oh, nice. Mm, controversial. No, not at all. <laughs> we know Luke's vote as well. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it has to be the Six Napoleons. <laughs> well, I mean, I think honestly, I've been reading the comments, and I think it's it's always down to either the Six Napoleons, the Blue Carbuncle, uh, Copper Beaches has been in some of the comments. Solitary Cyclist has been in some of the comments. Yeah, those. I think I'm sure it's going to be one of those that takes. It, I think but, it's Blue uh, Carbuncle. I'd put money on Blue Carbuncle. Yeah, money, I think I think Blue Carbuncle or Six Napoleons. I think it's going to be one of those that takes it. I've been noticing something about myself recently, which is I tend to like gravitate towards things that have like a strong prop in the episode or mm-hmm. in the show or in the movie or whatever. Because a relic, maybe <laughs> a relic, maybe. Because it, it gives you something to, to lust after or maybe replicate. There's something about it. There's something that like kind of takes all of the story in the episode and kind of hones it into one object, like mm-hmm. a lightsaber mm-hmm. or a bust of Napoleon. It personifies it. And, and we should say they will be releasing the results of the poll in the next episode in early part of, of this year. I hope everyone out there had a great holiday. Whatever happens with BrettCon 2024... 
We wish everyone out there the best for the new year. We're really looking forward to many great new developments for the podcast in the coming days. So thanks for listening and uh, happy new year, everybody. Breadcom. Breadcom.